Joining us right now is W.L. Ross and company chairman and Trump economic advisor Wilbur Ross. Wilbur, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Maria. How would you characterize things right now? Continuation of talk that we could see a recession on the horizon. What do you think about an interest rate hike and the possibility of a recession? Well, that's a lot of questions, but I'll try to deal with them. <laughs> Um, as to the interest rate hike, I think they will. I think they should. I think they should have done it long ago. I think we ought to get it over with. Get this first 25 basis points behind us, and let's see if the world really collapses as a result. I don't think it will. As to the economy, the last jobs report was not very good. It was mostly excuse me, part-time jobs that were created. There was actually a net loss of full-time jobs. That's not such a vigorous kind of an economy, right. particularly because all jobs are not created equal. Part-time job flipping hamburgers is not the same as a job in a steel mill. Yeah. Uh, Dagan, we're, we're waiting on, I guess, retail sales this week. We'll also get a look at GDP, but it's been pretty consistent and it's been slow. Just weak and a, I guess a sense of malaise in, in terms of economic growth that you see pockets of, uh, of right. good news, but not enough good news broadly to really lift all boats. If Hillary Clinton gets elected, what happens? Based on the, her, the, her policies, do you think that they get pushed through? Well, I think, it, her, first of all, I think her election will be a negative because the plan basically is raise tax and raise regulation. I don't think that's a formula to get anything jump started. Like a market negative, immediate market negative, you think? Well, m immediate country negative, Just immediate, economy, immediate negative. economy negative. How the market will react, who knows? They'll probably be glad the damn thing is over with. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be one <laughs> yeah. reaction to Initially. it. Initially. Because this has had so many twists and turns, and probably more to come. But, but over time, there is an impact of more regulation, right, um, when, when you look at some of her policies, and higher taxes. Isn't that true, Kevin? Yeah, one of the biggest issues I think that could be facing on the horizon is, is, is her tax policy. If we look into the Trump tax plan, he wants to let uh, companies repa repatriate taxes right. here, which would lead to a lot of growth, only a 10% tax rate, business tax rates at 15%, which is great. Makes us competitive with the rest of the developed world. Under her policy, You've got to be a crony capitalist, uh, and, and she's exactly. always been that way. And you think about the Clinton policies, you know, it's whatever is politically convenient for them at the time. She was f against Keystone XL pipeline, and then she was for it once, once there were donations to Bill Clinton. So when it goes to TPP, who knows what she could do? All hands, are, all, you know, bets are off when it comes to that scenario. So what do you think when it comes to our trade policies? I mean, it seems like Trump has a better trade policy oh, plan yeah. in place than well, she does. I, I, I think TPP is pretty well done. Ed. Sandy Levin, the ranking Democrat on House Ways and Means, came before the Council on Foreign Relations last week, excoriating it. And one of the most interesting things he said, the in independent the Trade Commission makes a report on each pending trade deal. Their analysis, according to Sandy Levin, did not even include what they gratuitously called the transition period. That's when everybody gets laid off because of the jobs going overseas. Wow. They specifically ignored it even though he requested them to deal with it. Now he's a ranking Democrat. If he's not going for it, she's going to have a tough time getting it through the Congress. I just, uh, I'll point out a front page story in the Wall Street Journal today that some major international in investors are basically changing their outlook because of the negativity toward trade. And they're moving out of stocks that have been buoyed by kind of globalization and greater trade around the world for three decades. So they are very concerned about the rhetoric from her and Donald Trump and really what's going on around the globe. Well, and it's a global thing. I think mm -hmm. people are tired not of trade, but of bad trade transactions, bad trade deals. What do you think our cumulative deficit with Mexico is since NAFTA came in? How about a trillion dollars? Wow. One trillion dollars in the years since NAFTA. That's a whole extra year's growth for the Mexican economy. Yeah, and, and I don't think that Trump is going to get in there and put these harsh tariffs well, in place gonna, there, this is not as much as he just wants to redo it's deals. Not, exactly. It's not, not, not Smoot Hawley. Smoot Hawley yeah. was kind of a blunderbuss. They said 3,000 items, we're going to throw up these big tariffs, no negotiation, no thinking. 
and it was in the middle of a depression that they did it. So it was about the worst time to do any kind of radical move. Yeah. This would be much more surgical, much more product by product, much more country by country, and much more preceded by negotiation. Well, but before you go, I want to ask you about the British pound. There's, a, there's an interview with John Malone uh, over the weekend where he's the chairman of Liberty Global. Sure, and he basically John. says, look, the, the plunge in the sterling is going to trigger a whole wave of takeovers in Britain, whereas you're going to see U.S. companies want to acquire U.K. companies. Do you believe that to be true? Well, I wouldn't be surprised because it's been a pretty severe cut, and they haven't even triggered Article 50 yet. So if Brexit really does occur, it's going to be at least two years from now, then probably a good deal more. And I think the more that the EU plays games like wanting tens of billions of euros as a kind of divorce payment, um, the less likely it becomes that they're going to do it or do it in a hurry. So, I mean, m and you think there'll be deals? I think there'll be deals, sure, because UK isn't going to zero. The economy there is actually pretty good. I was with the British ambassador at the uh, IMF a week or so ago. The economy there is fine. It hasn't felt any real repercussions. And if anything, a weak yeah. pound will help exports. Yeah, that we were saying as well. There's so much hysteria around it. Wilbur, good to see you. Good to Thank see you. Thank you so much. Wilbur Ross joining us there. Still